the noon heat in the yard smelled of stillness and coming thunder. The hen scratched and picked at the shore. It stopped, its body crouched and puffed out. The brooding silence seemed to say, hush. The cottage door opened, a black hole in a whitewashed wall, so bright the eyes narrowed. Inside, a clock murmured, gong. I had felt all this before. She hurried out in her slippers, muttering, her face dark with anger, and gathered the hen up, jerking languidly. Her hand fumbled, too late, too late. It fixed me with its pebble eyes, seeing what mad blur. A white egg showed in the sphincter, mouth and beak opened together, and time stood still. Nothing moved, bird or woman, fumbled or fumbling, locked there, as I must have been, gaping. There was a tiny movement at my feet, tiny and mechanical. I looked down. A beetle, like a bronze leaf, was inching across the cement, mm. clasping with small tarsi a ball of dung bigger than its body. The serrated brow pressed the ground humbly, lifted in a short stare, bowed again. The dung ball advanced minutely, losing a few fragments, specks of staleness and freshness. A mutter of thunder far off, time not quite stopped. I saw the egg had moved a fraction, a tender, blank brain under torsion, a clean new world. As I watched, the mystery completed, the black zero of the orifice closed to a point, and the white zero of the egg hung free, flecked with greenish-brown oils. It slowly turned and fell. Dreamlike, fussed by her splayed fingers, it floated outward moon-white, leaving no trace in the air, and began its drop to the shore. I feed upon it still, as you see. There is no end to that which, not understood, may yet be noted and hoarded in the imagination, in the yoke of one's being, so to speak, there to undergo its quite animal growth, dividing blindly, twitching, packed with will, searching in its own tissue for the structure in which it may wake. Something that had, clenched in its cave, not been, now was, an egg of being. Through what seemed a whole year it fell, as it still falls for me, solid and light, the red gold beating in its silvery womb, <clears throat> alive as the yolk and white of my eye, as it will continue to fall, probably, until I die, through the vast indifferent spaces with which I am empty. It smashed against the grating and slipped down quickly out of sight. It was over in a comical flash. The soft mucus shell clung a little longer, then drained down. She stood staring in blank anger, then her eyes came to life, and she laughed and let the bird flap away. It's all the one. There's plenty more where that came from. Hen to pan. It was a simple world.